In the previous video, we said that we'd explain what loading objects into the memory and limiting 3D trees is later. You can load the 3D objects into the memory, we'll talk about that in a second. And you can limit the tree, we'll also talk about that. In this video, we are going to be doing just that. So let's talk about loading objects to the memory. When we imported the model, we checked the option to load all of the objects into the memory. And if we go to the 3D objects tab, we'll see the four models we imported with checkboxes next to each model. Now that's because they are loaded in the model. If we hadn't chosen that option, they would have been unloaded and therefore you don't see them in the 3D view. This is different than filtering. We'll talk about filtering later, but for now, know that this completely unloads the object from the memory. So it's more light on your machine than actually filtering. However, it applies to all of the 3D views. Later we'll see that filtering can apply to only one of multiple 3D views or many of multiple 3D views and it's much more flexible in terms of color schemes. But for now this will be very helpful since we can load one model at a time. For example, just the site, just the structure or just the architecture. And in addition to that we can expand the tree. Maybe uncheck this so if you want to work just on the structural framing and the structural columns we can do that. And this will be very helpful later in the training because we can work on small subsets of the model without overloading the memory. So pause the video now and practice loading and unloading different subsets of the model. Welcome back, so now let's talk about limiting the tree. So you've noticed that we have something like architecture, for example, we can expand that then there's doors, these are the Revit family types, by the way. So there's the family type, then the different type, so the family, the different type, then the different sizes, and then the different instances. So that's how Revit models are structured, and we can load and unload these. However, we can also limit the tree, for example, if they go way more detailed than we want. For example, for Revit, that usually doesn't happen, but if you're importing multiple models in a master plan, and you want the architecture to just be one element that grows as a group and then the structure to be one element in a master schedule involving a hammock or level of effort activities, you can actually limit the trees for those models to one. For example, you just import this, it's one object. Or you can limit it to two. For example, you import the model, all the columns are grouped into one object, all the floors into one object, all the roofs into one object, and so on. So that would be limiting the tree. I can show an example of that, for example. You don't have to do this since that would involve re-importing some models. So I'm going to go File, Import 3D, maybe choose the uh, structure, and I'll try limiting the tree to 1. 0 is unlimited. So we'll import that limiting the tree to 1. And I'll click No Assignment for now. We're, we're going to explain resources in a bit. So you see, this is the structure I just imported. It's one model that cannot be expanded. And that's useful. Limiting the tree to one is useful when you're importing equipment that are only going to be used as blocks. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go File, Import again, 3D, same model. Try limiting the tree to two. And you'll notice that the one from before still is there. So you have to be careful to bring it back to zero if you don't want that anymore. And then try importing. Again, I'll skip resources for now. And now we have this new structural model where I'm going to hide the old one or unload the old one. We have this new structural model where each one of these families is just a single element and so on. So uh, in some cases, this may be a trial and error exercise until you figure out what's the correct level of detail you need for your planning purposes. You can also unload objects even if they're not grouped under the same tree. For example, if let's say you want to unload a part of the model, let's say you don't have site and landscape and you want to unload the left half or the right half, you can box select that half and then right click, edit, unload. And what this does is that it'll find these checkboxes for you and automatically uncheck them. And then if you want to uh, load that again, you can unload and reload everything. There are faster ways to do this, for example, saving them as filters and using that. You can, for example, here also right-click Collapse All. 
and we'll look at filters in the next video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.